Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to discuss biology of Scirpophaga nivella, which is a pest of sugarcane and some other crops. This lecture is the second part of the series on pests of sugarcane. I discussed the biology of Pinella parthosilla in the first part and you can find the link in the description box. Sugarcane is one of the most important crops worldwide. The scientific name of sugarcane is Saccharum officinarum. It belongs to the grass family Gramini or Poesi. The plants grow up to 2 to 6 meters and they have jointed fibrous stalks. Sucrose accumulates in the stalk internodes and this sucrose is extracted for sugar production. Sugarcanes are used for 79% of global sugar production. Here is a distribution map of sugarcane. This crop is cultivated in many countries and India is one of the major producers. This map should give you an idea about the importance of sugarcane in agricultural economy. In this series, I am talking about three pests of sugarcane and in this video, I am going to talk about sugarcane top border, Scirpophaga nivella. To discuss its biology, I am going to talk about its systematic position or taxonomic status, identification and distribution, habits, life cycle, nature of damage and control. So let's start with systematic position. Scapophaga nivella belongs to phylum Arthropoda, subphylum Uniremia, class Insecta, subclass Terigota, division Endopterigota, order Lepidoptera, family Pyralidae or Crambidae. Genus Scirpophaga, species Scirpophaga nivella. Now here I have given two names for family which can confuse you a little bit. But Pyralidae and Crambidae, both families are very close and they have many similarities. Scirpophaga nivella belongs to superfamily Pyraloidea and some authors classify it under family Pyralidae and some authors put it under family Crambidae. So I have given both the names here. How can you identify Scirpophaga nivella? You have to check for three points. First one is the very distinctive white color. The moth is bright white, silvery or creamy white in color. Second point is that for females, the anal end is deep red in color and it is covered by orange tuft of hair. In case of males, there would be one black spot on each forewing. So, for males, you would find one black spot on each wing and for females, you would find the bright red anal end. The female is also a little bit larger than the males and they measure 25 to 40 millimeter across the wings. Let's talk about the life cycle. In any Lepidopteran insect, you would find the adult stage, the egg stage, the larva or caterpillar stage and the pupa stage. The male and female would mate and the female would lay eggs. The eggs would hatch into larva. Larva will pupate after going through a few molds and then the pupa will emerge as adult. So let's put this game for Scirpophaga nivella. Here is the picture of an adult. The male and female would mate. Female would lay eggs. The eggs would take five to seven days to hatch and then the larvae will come out. The larvae will go through five moltings and it will take four to five weeks and then it will pupate. The pupa will emerge as the adult in 10 to 12 days. There can be five to seven generations per year. Let's talk about each stage in detail. The eggs are laid in small batches on the underside of leaves of young plants and near the midrib in the older plants. So depending on the maturity of the sugarcane plant, the leaves, I, I mean the eggs can either be laid on the underside of the leaves or near the midrib in the older plants. The number of eggs per batch ranges from 10 to 80 and the mass or cluster of eggs soon gets uh, covered by orange hairy sheath. The egg hatches in about a week in warm places, whereas in colder places, it takes 10 to 12 days, depending upon temperature. So here I would like to emphasize that for any insect's life cycle, if the weather is warmer, 
it takes a shorter time to complete the life cycle and if the weather is colder then the insect would take longer to complete the life cycle so exactly the same thing happens here that if the weather is warmer it takes shorter time to hatch and if the weather is colder then the eggs take longer to hatch the larva matures after uh, four to five weeks and it goes through five molds the mature larva is creamy white and sluggish creature it uh, is about 25 to 30 millimeter long the fully grown larva pupates inside the tunnel but before pupation it makes an exit hole in the cane for the emergence of future moth remember its common name is sugarcane top borer that means that it bores at the topmost part of the stem and then it feeds on the tissue inside the stem so while it does so it makes a tunnel inside the cane and that is the place where the larva matures and pupates but before pupation it makes an exit hole so that when the pupa emerges as the adult it does not have to do any extra work it can just come out through that hole temporarily that is when it the pupation stage is inside the stem this hole remains covered by silky threads the pupal period lasts for 10 to 12 days after which the adult emerges out so it uses this exit hole and comes out of the stem the male and female moth then mate to lay eggs. There may be five to seven generations in a year depending upon the climatic conditions of the region. So if the weather is warmer, it will have more number of generations and if the weather is colder, then it will uh, have fewer generations. This pest remains active from February to October and during winter it hibernates in larval stage. So post winter that hibernated larva will pupate and then it will come out as the adult. Habits of Scirpophaga nivella Sugarcane is one of its hosts. It can also survive in many other plants of the grass family. The newly hatched caterpillars enter the midrib of the leaf stay there for 24 to 48 hours after which they enter the central leaf spindle bore through the growing point and tunnels down 10 to 15 centimeters deep into the cave the larva becomes fully grown in about five to six weeks the caterpillar feeds and pupates within the host plant there may be four to five overlapping broods during the active period which is april to october as I said that there are many alternative hosts for Scripophaga nivella. Here is a picture of Saccharum spontanea, which is a very commonly found grass in India. And this grass can also work as alternate host for Scripophaga nivella. Now, how does it damage the plant? Generally, the newly hatched caterpillar penetrates into the midrib from the underside of the leaf and bores downward towards the main stem or axil. Remember the eggs were laid on the underside of the leaves, right? So when the eggs hatch, the larva will come out and those larva or those caterpillar penetrates into the midrib from the underside of the leaf and bores downward towards the main stem or axil. Okay. Now once axil is the stalk of the leaf, so after reaching the axle of the leaf, the larva comes out of the midrib and bites into the hole of newly emerged leaves forming the spindle. So if you think of any grass family plant, then you would see that at the center, the new leaves grow. So the new leaf forms like a spindle and then that spindle opens up to a new leaf. Now, what Scirpophaga nivella larvae would do is that they would bore through those through that spindle and will go at the center of the stem or the topmost part of the stem. Now, as it bores through that spindle or through the unfurled leaf, it makes these gunshot-like wounds. 
okay so at the center leaf you would find these grass uh, these gunshot like wounds and that will tell you that there must be scapophaga nivella attack in sugarcane next problem is that because the scapophaga nivella larva goes inside the stem it first goes from the top right so at the top the growing tissue is eaten up by the larvae as a result the central leaves die and they become dry and brown so if you look at the plant you would see that the central leaf has died whereas the other leaves are still alive okay this is not a sugarcane uh, plant and this is not an attack by scapophaga nivella either but i just wanted to show you how uh, the central shoot uh, how the dead central shoot look like okay so this symptom is also known as the dead heart the characteristic effects of this pest are so number one is gunshot like wounds number two is dead heart and then there is another symptom because the central part dies there are many more branches that grow from the sides that way the plant instead of looking like a tall plant it just makes a bunch of leaves at the topmost part okay so this symptom is known as bunchy top so we got three symptoms due to scapophaga nivella attack first one is gunshot like wounds second point is the central shoot being dead or dead heart and third point is bunchy top okay about 20 to 40 percent of the destruction caused to this crop is due to this pest let's now talk about how we can control scapophaga nivella there are various methods first is cultural method Harvesting should be done by the middle of February, that is before the emergence of moth after hibernation. You would remember from the life cycle that the larvae in winter would hibernate inside the stem. And after the winter, the larvae would pupate and the adults would come out. Now, if the harvesting is done just before the pupae would come out as adults, then the adults cannot come out into the field okay and they can be killed later on the stumps should be dug out of the soil and destroyed so that if there is any uh, hibernating larva in the stumps that should also be killed and cultivation of resistant variety of sugarcane is always effective so there are certain sugarcanes which are developed against the lepidopteran pest so these are resistant to lepidopteran pest attack those kind of uh, sugarcane cultivation is effective against scapophaga nivella. Next one is mechanical method. The pest can be controlled by regular collection and destruction of the eggs. This also reduces the density of the pest population. So if you just go selectively and search for sugarcane top borer and remove the affected plants or burn the affected plants and if you find the egg masses, if you remove those, then obviously that would reduce the density of the pest population. The characteristic dead heart and bunchy top should be removed from the crop and destroyed. So if any plant is showing the symptom of dead heart or bunchy top, that means there are larvae of Scapophaga nivella inside that plant. So those kind of plants should be selectively removed and destroyed. The light traps may be used to attract the moth which are later on killed. So these moths like any other moth are nocturnal so at night if there is a light trap used then the moth would be attracted towards the light and then they can be captured and killed now you have to remember here that uh, mechanical methods although are very effective it is not very practical to use these measures when there is a huge field of sugarcane so if you have just a few plants then of course this system can work but when there is a huge field of sugarcane then this mechanical method may not be very practical so in that case you can use chemical methods for chemical methods you can either use organochlorines or endrine or endosulfan as 0.1 percent emulsion 
You can also dust with enrine or endosulfone. And you can also use carbamate type of uh, pesticides like carbofuran. Okay. Uh, so, if you are spraying enrine or endosulfone, then it should be sprayed at the time of egg laying of the third generation. Or if the weather condition permits, this treatment may be repeated against the fourth generation as well from August to September. So, what does this weather condition permitting means? It means that if there is less rain, because in rain, the organochlorine pesticides can be washed up. So, if there is less rain and if there is a drier period, then it can be repeated. This application of pesticide can be repeated. Application of carbofuran or forate granules in the soil at 20 kg per hectare also proved effective in controlling this pest. There is another way of controlling this pest. Chemical pesticides should be avoided because they are harmful for the plants as well as the consumers of the sugarcane. So, we should always prefer biological methods. There are a number of egg para parasitoids, caterpillar parasitoids and pupal parasitoids available. These can be released in the field or if there are these parasitoids which are naturally occurring in the field, then the development of those insects should be encouraged. Okay, So, either you can release them or you can protect these natural enemies of Scapophaga nivella. This way, you can control the pest very effectively. Now, let us recap the whole uh, topic. Scapophaga nivella belongs to order Lepidoptera and family Pyralidae. Uh, it can be identified with its silvery white color, black spots on the forewing uh, for the males and red abdominal end in case of females. It is a generalized uh, feeder. In winter, the larva hibernates. For life cycle, it would have egg, caterpillar, pupa and adult. Uh, for nature of damage, you can find gunshot like holes in the leaves. In the central leaf, you would find these gunshot like holes. There would be bunchy top as well as dead central, central shoot or dead heart. For control, chemical, cultural, mechanical and biological control can be used. So, Scirpophaga nivella which is widely found in India and Southeast Asia uh, can be uh, studied well to control it and uh, we should use these different methods to control this pest. But knowing about its biology always gives you an upper hand to control this pest. So, I am going to stop here. Hope you like this video. Please come back for the third part of this series.